Okay, second example of projectiles, we're going to start drawing my diagram, but I couldn't change my pen colour, so let's do it now. Um, we are projected from ground level, line, speed of view, so again that is the diagonal, um, or magnitude if you like, in the, it's in the direction theta above the horizontal, so angle theta, speed u, and then again we just need to split into our horizontal and vertical components of that, so this would be u, Sine opposite so from soccer tower sine theta adjacent ka cos from soccer tower so that'll be u cos theta. This one I think above the example makes about a lot you know mechanics question is quite common to have a lot of unknowns in and this is you know your example here. Doesn't mean it's necessarily more difficult because people get off put by those things. So maximum height. I'm gonna zoom again upwards and you know right both the positive directions. So maximum height is a vertical zubat. So S U V A T. I put my zubat equations in this slide, but luckily I think I know mine. So I'm looking for the maximum height. It comes from the ground, so unlike the last example, I don't need to add anything to it. Vertically, we're using the U sine theta. Um, v. I the maximum will be zero. Uh, a is your negative 9.8. However, to show that question, and they're using G, so I'm just going to use negative G. Okay, T is not going to be involved, I don't think. Um, we're doing the one without T, so it's the V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. So we can say that zero squared, and to show that, so I am going to show all these different bits, equals u sine theta all squared, remembering that both things can get squared, and again, the show that will help, plus, although technically it's minus, I'll just put it straight as minus, minus 2, a is g, s is what we're looking for, and then just rearrange, so they want uh, the maximum height, so that's s equals, so I'll say that 2 g s equals 2 u squared, sine squared theta, make sure you get the squared in both, although to show that as I said should help. And then S equals U squared sine squared theta over 2G. So that's a kind of general from a uh, from the ground general maximum height. It's not a formula you need to remember but it's uh, one you need to normally do numerically. Part B we're given those uh, bits of information. So this one is interesting in how it wants you to do and I say interesting I'm not a fan of shortcuts but if we start here and we have a maximum height the thing about projectiles and this is because there's no horizontal or assumed to be no horizontal forces acting on it this if this is the whole range I think that's on, on the uh, one of the slides in the gap notes at the maximum it will have gone half the range Okay. So this is kind of teasing you, I think, into using that. It's not a hence, but they've given you something, so it's a, it's a kind of hidden hence, if you like. You can just go back to the start and do it the way you'd normally do, or the way we did in the last example, sorry, but this is, I think, kind of getting you to do that. Um, when, although you can't actually find the time. Hmm, feels like a hence. Maybe, maybe not, actually, because to do the range, we need the time, and we can't get... Yeah, well, time's not included in this formula, so... Felt like it was going to be a hence, maybe not. Right, anyway. Um, so, we're wanting the range. So, as I said before, in the last example, range, horizontal. But, you need to know two out of three things, and one of them is time, and we don't have the time. So, we're going to have to find the time for this projectile to hit the ground again. So we're actually going to have to work vertically first. It takes some time to get your head around how all that works, I think. It doesn't just come automatically. So if we start at the ground and we're looking for the point where it hits the ground again, the displacement will actually be zero vertically. Obviously, it's travelled a vertical distance, but the displacement, the difference in height from start and end is zero. U, well, we know that this is a general form, so it's going to be U sine theta, so it's going to be 4.5 sine of 30. We could do the time taken to get to the maximum 
and then double it and that's kind of the same idea here but I can't see that necessarily being any easier that would just be this one being zero instead of this one so I'm going to ignore that one a uh, I'm going to use minus 9.8 obviously we could use this minus g and t is what we're looking for so we need the equation that doesn't have a v in it I think we used it last time for range as well of course so for the s equals uh, the ut plus half a t squared you do get given these formulas, which is why I put them on the previous slide. I guess I forgot this time. So 0 equals 4.5 sine of 30 t. And then plus, so it's going to like minus, minus 4.9 t squared. This is one that can be solved by um, doing a little single bracket factorization but all I'm going to do is write it in my graphical calculator instead. I would actually normally take the four, take both terms over to the other side um, so just be careful when you're solving it to either rearrange it or to type in as it is but in the correct order so mine's going to be positive 4.9 and negative 4.5 sine of 30 you could do the other way around and I'm going to get two answers by the looks of it which is zero so that makes sense because that's actually at the start where there's no displacement and then at the end where either you can have it as a fraction but generally in, in mechanics we go decimal which would be 0 0.459 seconds in fact I'm going to use 4592 it's not final answer so I'm not going to add it to 3 6 big and then to find the range either using your distance speed and time or using your SUVAT I used distance speed and time last time so I used SUVAT this time so horizontally S is going to be what we're looking for, that's the range. U starts at U cos 30, so uh, 4.5 cos 30, and it will continue at that speed. Velocity, sorry. V will still be 4.5 cos 30, but we're not really interested in that, it won't help us. A, 0, but that's not going to help us, although we will need it. And T is this. In fact, I might even use the 45 of a 98. At this point, because we won't lose any rounding that way. If you're using horizontal and you do use SUVAT, you will always use this formula because it's just distance, speed, and time with a not important acceleration notch on the end. So it's going to be S is what we're looking for, and it's going to be 4.5 cos 30 multiplied by 45 over 98. And then that'll be zero anyway. So if you've got the flexibility to understand it's just going to be distance, speed and time and you feel that's going to work for you, that's probably easier. If you want it to just be the same as vertical velocity for you but with acceleration of zero, that's fine as well. I've got 1.79 metres and that's the textbook, uh, uh, sorry, textbook agrees with me so that's good. And then the last part, part C, is just a little comment. How will the answer to B change if air resistance is included in this model? Okay, so if air resistance is increased, we it will kind of slow us down, and um, so the range would be smaller. Okay, so it decreased the um, would have deceleration, I suppose, um, horizontally. But it's all about what we call the particle model, making something simple that we can kind of work it out, and having a balance between that and something very realistic. Uh, which we kind of get that balance in mechanics.